Eric Burgess here, and we've been given the following series. We got a fifth, plus a seventh, plus a ninth, plus a thirteenth, and this goes on and on. And they want to know, does it converge? Does it diverge? As this goes on and on, what happens to this series? So, okay, first thing we need to do is we need to write this as a series because working like this is a little more difficult. So I like to rewrite everything um, and just see what kind of patterns I see. So we see here that there's a plus two happening every time. And so let's go ahead and write that in. So if we do that, we're going to get one. And then if we take away two from five, we get three plus two. And we could rewrite the next fraction as if we take away two from seven, that's five plus two. And we go on and on, we get nine uh, minus two is seven plus two, you know, so on and so forth. I think we see the pattern. So from here, we want to try and get to N. Now, there's a couple ways you could write this. Uh, the way I came up with was I said, well, geez, if we want to skip every single one, like five is really the same thing as like six minus one, right? And seven is the same thing as... Uh, 8 minus 1 and it's easier to get to even numbers because we just multiply by 2 so if we have n and we and we multiply n by 2 and then we take away 1 we'll wind up with whatever value that is now if we do it this way uh, we would start at an n value that would give us our first our first spot here so we want to get the value 6 so n would equal 3, and then we go to infinity of 1 over uh, 2n minus 1, right? And if n is 3, we're going to get 6 minus 1 is 5. If n is, so the next value, right? So is now n is 4, that would be 8 right here, minus 1, that's 7. And we see that we're producing the values as we go down. So this is one way to do it. This is the way I did it. Uh, there's another way to write this series, though. Let's say that you're really insistent. You want the n to start at 1. Well, it's it's the same idea here, only this time we're going to change this value. I think this one's a little less intuitive. I don't know. Maybe you came up with this one first. Uh, but if you want n to start at 1 and you want to go you know, up to infinity, well, how are we going to get... Uh, 5 instead of, you know, uh, we, we all want 5, but we still want n to be 1. So if n is 1, this is going to give us 2, because we're still going to use the 2n. So 2, and so we need 3 more. So you can do plus 3. It's, it'll, it'll give you the exact same thing, only in this case, uh, your n starts at 1. So you may prefer this way instead. And so, yeah, there's that. And just to show you, if we were to plug in 2, we're going to get 4 plus 3. That's going to be uh, 7. And if you plug in 3 plus 3, you're going to get 9 because it'll be 3 times 2, which is 6 plus 3 is 9. And away you go. So we're going to go ahead and do this. We can do, we can do it for both of them just to show you that they're the same, I suppose. So, okay, rules, right? We're going to look at this and we say, well, this is kind of a gross looking thing, but... If you look at it carefully, we say, well, check this out. They are, both functions are positive for their given n values. So they're both positive. Uh, they are both continuous. And on, they're continuous specifically uh, on the interval that we're interested in. And they are uh, decreasing. So, right, these ends grow big, and as they grow big, the denominators grow in size, causing the overall thing to shrink. So, they are decreasing. And then, of course, all this stuff is on the interval uh, wherever your end starts. So, on this one, it would be from 3 to infinity. And on the other one, it would be from 1 to infinity. And this should be a bracket because we're including the value 1. Same for the 3. This should also be a bracket. All right, let's start with this integral first. We're going from 1 to infinity. 
So we're going to go ahead and do our integral test here. 1 to infinity of 1. And then we're going over to the continuous variable x plus 3 dx. Now, integral at infinity, right, what we like to do with that kind of stuff is we say, well, let's replace that with a t and let t go way out there. And so now we're going to have from, I really want to write 0, from 1 to t. It's like a habit. Okay, so from 1 to t, we're going to have 1 over 2x plus 3 dx. All right, from here, we say, okay, uh, this is a pretty straightforward integral, right? It's just the natural log. So we take the derivative of what's down here, right? Because we're going to need to divide by that, which is just going to give us a 2. So we're going to have 1 half the natural log. And in fact, out front, let me put it now, the limit as t goes to infinity of 1 half the natural log and then we've got absolute value here. We're going to have 2x plus 3 from 0 to t. And then we can evaluate this as the limit as t goes to infinity. And then the 1 half natural log. This becomes 2t plus 3. Let me make a better line here. Minus one half the natural log of and then when t is one did i put a zero again gosh dang it this should be a one <laughs> we have ones everywhere else okay so that should have been a one because we don't we didn't change our our limits of integration anywhere so that's going to be a one and when we do that we're going to get two times one plus three that's the natural log of five and you know this is some number but when we take this limit that's going to be infinity and infinity minus, you know, some number is still infinity. Therefore, divergent by test for divergence. So for the next integral, instead of going from 1 to infinity like we did here, we are going to go from 3 to infinity. And just to show you that it works, let's go ahead and do that. And so I'm going to go straight for the limit too. So we're going to go limit as t goes to infinity, integral. And we're going to go from 3 to t this time. And again, we're going to go over to the continuous variable x, so 1 over 2x minus 1 dx. We already know that we're going to keep our limit as we go through here. And then we have the natural log. And when we take this, we're going to have that 1 half come out because of the derivative. And we're going to take the natural log of this, 2x minus 1. And we're going to go from this time, 3 to t. And this is going to give us the limit as t goes to infinity. And we're going to get 1 half natural log. And again, we're going to get 2t minus 1. And then we're going to have minus 1 half natural log. And when x is 3, we're going to get 2 times 3 is 6 minus 1 is 5. So you see we actually get the exact same thing. I just wrote it a smidgen different. So again, we're going to get the whole, this is just some number, this is infinity. So we're going to get divergent. By, and then you might justify this stuff. You might say by integral test. If it wasn't obvious that we were doing an integral test. But anyways, that's the process. So not too complicated of a process. Basically, you take an integral. If it ends up being a number, then you're like, super, that's convergent. If it doesn't, then you're like, not super, that's not convergent. And you got to make sure that these conditions hold before you do it. If you have any questions, feel free to let me know down in the comments, and we'll catch you in the next problem.